microservices and micro frontends have emerged as game changers in the dynamic realm of software development due to their innovative architectural styles. Now, in my previous video, I have explained principles of microservices architecture and their applications in distributed systems. Micro frontends extend these principles of microservices to the front end of web applications. It is a web development architectural pattern that decouples the front end of a web application into smaller, independently deployable modules. Each module represents a distinct feature or functionality of the application and can be developed, tested, and deployed independently. This allows for greater flexibility and scalability as well as easier maintenance and updates. Now, there are many ways to achieve a micro frontend architecture. In this video, I'll first cover some of the basic building blocks of micro frontend, some useful micro frontend patterns, and then share a list of simple micro frontend project examples in React, Angular, and Vue to help any beginner to come up with their own micro frontend approach. So, let's get started. One of the challenges with a monolithic frontend is that it can be difficult to change or update individual components without affecting the rest of the application. For example, if you want to change the design of the checkout page, you will need to update the entire frontend application. And this can be a time consuming and error prone process. With micro frontends, you can avoid this problem by dividing the micro frontend into smaller independent micro frontends. Each micro frontend is responsible for its own UI, logic, and data, and they communicate with each other through well-defined APIs. This means that you can change or update individual micro frontends without affecting the rest of the application. For example, you can have one micro frontend for the home page, another micro frontend for the product pages, and another micro frontend for the shopping cart page. This would make it much easier to change or update individual components without affecting the rest of the application. Now the best solution I have seen is the single SPA meta framework to combine multiple frameworks on the same page without refreshing the page. This website is a demo application that shows off what single SPA can do. It combines React, Vue, Angular, Angular 2, etc. The single SPA is a JavaScript library that allows for many small applications to coexist in one single page applications. When a user requests a page from a micro frontend application, the browser first load the main application shell. The main application shell will then load the individual micro frontends that are needed for the page. The micro frontends communicate with each other through well-defined APIs. These APIs can be RESTful APIs, GraphQL APIs, or any other type of API that is appropriate for the application. Speaking of micro frontend communication, Module Federation is a new JavaScript technology that makes it easy to build micro frontends or MFE. It allows you to import and export JavaScript modules from different micro frontends. This makes it easy to share code and data between micro frontends. Module Federation is supported by a number of popular JavaScript frameworks, including React, Angular, and Vue.js. It is a relatively new technology, but it is gaining popularity among developers who are building micro frontends. It is a powerful technology that can make it easy to build scalable, reliable, and easy to maintain MFE applications. With all being said, let's see how MFE work practically. Here is a simple project I found a good candidate to demo micro frontends. Now I'm going to do a high level code walkthrough and if you want to get a deeper understanding, you should check out the entire video wherein the author explains everything step by step. So here we have an e-commerce application wherein the project modules are divided into micro frontend apps. The main app is acting as the container and we have two MFEs, products and cart. The container itself is a MFE. However, it is a shell for other MFEs to represent e-commerce application as the whole to the end user. Now I have already cloned the code and installed all the dependencies. So let's do a high level code walkthrough. Like I said earlier, there are three MFEs created. Product MFE, cart MFE, and container MFE. In product MFE, there is package.json where all the dependencies are declared and later installed using npm install command. Webpack.config.js is used to build the projects where we also define which port the MFE will run. In that, I have two plugins. HTML Webpack plugin allows index.js file automatically injected in index.html. Typically in front-end apps, we have source slash index.js file. And here, faker is used to generate the faker data and display the same in HTML file which is tied through the product list div in index.html. Index.html here renders all the products. 
Now, when you run npm start and go to port 3001, you see a list of products. All this data is generated by Faker library. So every time you refresh the page, you get a different or random set of data. Similarly, there is a cart MFE, which is configured to run in port 3002 and displays the number of items in the cart. And again, here Faker is used to randomize and generate fake data. Finally, there is container MFE, which is our shell application running in port 3000, whose job is to bring product and cart together, which you can see in index.html file, where it is injecting product list and cart list. Container, product and cart are running in three different ports. So you can imagine it running in three different servers. They are not libraries which are added as dependency in the same code, but totally three different applications or micro frontends. And all this is possible is because of module federation plugin configured in each of the MFA's Webpack configurations. Module federation plugin works by dynamically loading and sharing code and dependencies between micro frontends at runtime. This means that each MFE can be developed and deployed independently without having to worry about the dependencies of other MFEs. The shell application here is a simple Webpack project that will load the bundles of micro frontends at runtime and render them to the page, wherein its module federation plugin will define the remotes of the product and cart. This configuration will specify the URL of the remote container and the modules that it exposes. Cart and product MFEs are also required to configure module federation plugin to expose themselves to let the container or the shell application load them at runtime. Cart exposes itself as cart index and the product as product index, which are then mapped to the container using remote entry.js. Once you have configured remotes, you can import modules from them in your application. Webpack will dynamically load the modules from the remote container when they are needed. Now let's run all three applications to see MFE in action. We are running product, cart and container in port 3002, 3001 and 3000 respectively. And our shell container MFE is able to display data from both product and cart MFE. Now if I change the code, say in cart MFE which is running on port 3002, I add the text shopping here and it will immediately reflect in product MFE which is running on port 3000 at runtime. No deployment needed. Webpack module federation is a more powerful and flexible implementation of the module federation pattern. It provides a number of features that makes it easier to build and deploy micro frontends with Webpack, such as the ability to import modules from other micro frontends, the ability to export modules to other micro frontends, the ability to load micro frontends on demand, and the ability to configure micro frontends. Micro frontends or MFEs offer a number of advantage over traditional monolithic frontends, including increased modularity and flexibility. MFEs can develop and deployed and maintained independently, which makes it easier to change or update individual components without affecting the rest of the application. And for the same reason, MFEs can be more complex to develop and maintain than traditional monolithic frontends because they require more coordination between teams than traditional monolithic frontends. This is because each development team might be responsible for developing and maintaining their own micro frontend. Now, many of the patterns that are used in microservices can also be applied to micro frontends. For example, an API gateway is a single point of entry for all requests to the microservices or micro frontends, and this can help to improve security and performance. Service discovery is a way for microservices or MFEs to find each other. Load balancing is a way to distribute traffic across multiple microservices or MFEs. A circuit breaker is a way to protect microservices or MFEs from cascading failures. For example, if one microservice or micro frontend fails, the circuit breaker will stop traffic from flowing into it, which can help to prevent the failure from affecting the rest of the application. Health checks are a way to monitor the health of microservices or MFEs. This can help to identify problems before they cause outages. In addition to these patterns, there are also some patterns that are specific to MFEs. For example, the following pattern can be used in micro frontends only. A shared UI library is a way to share common UI components across multiple micro frontends. This can help to improve consistency and reduce the amount of code that needs to be written. A micro frontend hub is a central repository of micro frontends. This can help to manage the different MFEs and make them easier to deploy and update. 
micro frontend messaging is a way for micro frontends to communicate with each other. This can be done using a variety of technologies such as WebSockets, REST APIs, or GraphQL. Now, if you are looking to build more complex micro frontend applications, then you may want to read about Single Spa, where you have multiple frameworks in one application. Or you can look up BFF or Backend for Frontend Framework, Open Component, and BET to compose components. Ultimately, the best way to decide which technologies you need to learn about is to start building micro frontend applications.